So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ba'd a'udh billahi min ash-shaytan ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, al-lazhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja. Inshallah ta'ala, today we are going to study Sutul Kahf up till I think ayah number 72. And uh, that will be the completion of the 15th juz. Then, uh, inshallah, so let us uh, continue. I mentioned last time the connection between uh, Sutul Bani Israel and Sutul Kahf, that they're interlinked with one another, like many surahs in the Quran, right? Many surahs in the Quran come in form of pairs, okay? Sutul Bani Israel starts with, Subhan al-Ladhi asra bi abdihi, okay? So we see that over here. Subhan al-Ladhi asra bi abdihi layla min al-Masjid al-Harami ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa al-Ladhi barakna hawlahu li nuriyahu min ayatina. Innahu huwa samyul basir. So, this subhanallah and alhamdulillah, they complete each other. Then in the end of uh, Sutul uh, Bani Israel, the last ayah says, Kul alhamdulillah, say alhamdulillah. And then Sutul Kahf starts with alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja. Over here, very great ayah, ayah 101. By the way, one of the similarities between the two is, Sutul Kahf is 110 ayahs, and Sutul Bani Israel is 111 ayahs. So they're very similar in terms of length also. And there are many other similarities. But because this is a fast of seer, so then, you know, I'm not going to go into full details right now. Subhanallah for the one who has not adopted for himself any son. This is the end. Say Alhamdulillah for the one who has not adopted for himself a son. And Sutul Kahf begins with, Warn the people, قَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدًا And we'll see that just in a second when we get to that ayah. That warn the people who say Allah has adopted a son. Because this modern corruption of the modern world has happened because of the corruption in Christianity. And I will maybe touch upon that. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُلْكِ And Christianity brought with it secularism. And over here Allah, over here Allah says, And there is no partner with him in his kingdom. He has no partner with him in his kingdom. And he has no friendships because of weaknesses. No. Allah has friends, but not because of any weaknesses. And make Allah most supreme. Okay? So, these two surahs, they're like a... Uh, and, and over here it talks about Christianity in the last ayah. Just one ayah about Christianity, and Sutul Kahf is then now devoted to that. Even the seven sleepers, even though there are about five, six different ideas of who the seven sleepers are, which I'll be talking a little bit about today, there are about five, six different, the two big ones being in Turkey and being in Jordan, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll mention one thing about that. About the seven sleepers, the biggest question is, that Imam Ibn Kathir raises a very interesting question. And that is, even the majority of the Mufassirin have said that the seven sleepers were Christians. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But Imam Ibn Kathir, rahmatullahi asks a very important question. And that is, why would the Jews, because the Prophet was asked three questions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Jews ask the Prophet a question that has to do with Christianity. Like, yes, alunaka ani ruh. They ask you about the Holy, the Spirit of the soul. Um, that is understood. They ask you about Dhul Qarnayn. That's understood. That has to do with the Jewish people. But Ashab al Kahf has to do with Christians. So this must have to do with a group of Jews, according to uh, Imam Ibn Kathir. Then there are other opinions there too. Okay? So now, uh, that warning that was given in Sutul Bani Israel. Immin qariyatin. Ayah number 58. Immin qariyatin. There will be no town, no city. Illa nahnu muhlikuha. Except we are going to destroy it. Qabla yawm al qiyamah. Before the day of judgment. Aw mu'adhibuha. Or severely punish it. Adhaban shadida. With a great punishment. You think coronavirus is a big deal? This is a real, real big deal. Even Allah is saying this. وَكَانَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَسْطُورًا And this is something that is written. It is the law. It is going to happen. It's coming to the world. This is now the topic that Qur'an begins with. 
And then after that, the warning to the Christians, because the most damage to the Muslims and to the world will be done by the Western European world. Okay, they now uh, let us continue now, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ba'da a'ud billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab Alhamdulillah, all praises for Allah alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab who sent upon his servant, meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-kitab, the book, the law وَلَمْ يَجَعَلْ لَهُ عِوَجَ and he has put no crookedness there is no, no deviance here and to further emphasize this point, that there's no deviance in this book, قَيِّمًا Straight up. It's straight. لِيُنذِرَ بَأْسًا شَدِيدًا Warn you of a great بَأْسًا شَدِيدًا A severe war is one meaning. Or severe hardships is the other meaning. Generally, بَأْسًا شَدِيدًا when it comes in the plural form means in terms of difficulty. Like we find in Ayatul Birr. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 177. When it's in the singular form, it generally means war. But in Surah Al-Bani Israel itself, when we were uh, reading about the history of Bani Israel, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعَثْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ إِبَادًا لَنَا أُلِي بَعْسٍ شَدِيدٍ Over there it means war. So this can mean war or great difficulty. So that means that same ayah. Either we will destroy it through war or there will be a great punishment. So both of those meanings fit in this ayah. Over here is being mentioned warning of what? And then number two will be warning of who? But this will be from him. He will do this. It will come from him. It will be uncalculated by human beings. It's just going to happen. He's going to allow it to happen. وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And in those difficult times, for Muslims to stay Muslims, in, in those difficult times, for Muslims to stick together, to have a jamaat, to have an amir, to try to protect Islam, right? To try to live Islam, to try to stand up for Islam, to try to stand up for justice will be very difficult. So Allah says, وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And give good tidings to the mu'mineen at that time. الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ Those who do good deeds at that time. Amal al-saliha means rectifying the wrong thing. يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَ Opposite of that is فَسَدَ يَفْسِدُ صَلَحَ يَسْلُهُ فَسَدَ يَفْسِدُ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا حَسَنًا May Allah make amongst us, Allah مَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ Allah make us amongst them. مَاكِثِينَ فِيهِ أَبَدًا and in this Jannah, they will remain forever and ever. So this is, what is the warning for? Now before I continue on the uh, warning to the Christian people, let me mention the main theme of this surah. Uh, and, and a few other basic points. Number one, as we all know, this is the surah that protects us from the Jad. Particularly the first ten ayahs and the last ten ayahs. The beginning of the surah and the ending of the surah. And uh, you know, what is the main theme of this surah? The main theme of this surah is don't be deceived by this dunya. Don't be deceived by the zina of this dunya. You'll see this word, zina tul hayat, zina, zina, zina. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived by the zina of this dunya. And in Surah Al-Bani Israel, the previous surah, the, in, in a way, one of the climaxes was, don't be in, 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 you know, when you do dua, you're in a haste and you ask for yourself things that are not good for you. Okay, and that you want what you want here and now. Now, there are many ahadiths. Now, uh, Sutul Kahf is a protection against Dajjal. This could include any type of Dajjal, meaning any type of person who claims to be a prophet or a messiah. Okay, but particularly in reference to the last Dajjal, which the prophet has talked about to a great extent, to a, a large extent, he's, uh, you know, there are many ahadiths of the Prophet Sallallahu about the Jal. Some of them, they contradict each other a little bit. About the Jal, I want to mention something very important. There are three types of the Jal. One is the fitna of the Jal. And the other is Masihud the Jal. Fitna of the Jal is a social phenomenon. This is what we're going through right now. 
This world changing into a new world. This is the fitna of Dajjal. And Masihu Dajjal is also a fitna because the Prophet has said, Fitna tul Masihu Dajjal. But there's the fitna of Dajjal, there's Masihu Dajjal, and then there's the fitna of Masihu Dajjal. Okay? Which is, fitna is always a social phenomenon. It has to do with society. The person who is going to come and lead that society when it is ready, or when he feels it's ready, is, um, is, uh, he is Masih al-Dajjal. He will claim to be a Masih, a prophet. So the main theme of this surah, there are five events in this surah, I believe. Number one is the Ashab al-Kahf. Think something supernatural happens. And another very important point, supernatural things happening by non-prophets. By non-prophets. Supernatural things happening by non-prophets is one of the themes of this surah. But, but not believing or not being uh, not making dunya a priority, but making akhirah your priority. You'll see this over and over again. So, the seven sleepers, then after the seven sleepers, you know the man in the garden, right? He's dazzled by dunya, dazzled by the illusion, okay? Dazzled by the illusion of dunya. Then you have the shaitan, and, uh, shaitan the iblis and Adam event is, is slightly mentioned. Also the event of وَلَا تَقُولُ إِنِّي فَائِلُ ذَلِكَ غَدَى إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءُ Don't say I'll do something tomorrow except you say inshallah. Why is this uh, ayah in this surah? Because uh, this is the surah that tells you don't look only at cause and effect. But also look at the other world. There are two worlds going simultaneously. And keep your eyes fixed in that other unseen world. Okay? Then is the story of Musa and Khidr. And this, you know, is a supernatural event. And then you have the the uh, the story of Zulqarnain. And this is about when there is a just ruler, how he has a super, you could say, supernatural wisdom. You can say wisdom of the supernatural. And even when he's a good just ruler, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what, uh, what, uh, you know, uh, sababa. We gave him power to follow all the causes. He followed all the cause and effects. This is what Quran says. But his eyes were on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His eyes were on the hereafter. And this will be uh, made very clear when we inshallah ta'ala get to that point. But the main point here is the main theme and the main thrust. Why will people fall for fitna of the jad? He's going to show you water and fire. He's going to show you heaven and hell. And his hell will be heaven. Okay? which will look like, oh, we're not getting anything from dunya. And when he gives you the water, or when he gives you the heaven, it's actually going to be fire, and it's going to put you in the fire, because you will think like, I'm going to get a lot of dunya. Okay? And so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making it clear, that that dunya that he's going to give you, is going to finally be destroyed anyway. And this whole world will be finally destroyed anyway. Now, ayah number three. What is being warned from is that war and trials upon the whole world. And who is being warned? Who will be the cause of that? The Zionist aspect uh, of the Jewish aspect of the Zionism is mentioned in Surah Bani Israel. They were the main topic, the Jews. And over here now, Christianity is in the beginning at least of this surah, the main topic. Okay? And to warn the people who say Allah has adopted for himself a son, malahum bihi min ilm. They have no knowledge about this. And it's so interesting, Allah says abaihim, nor their forefathers. Because what they call them is the, 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 the fathers of the early church. Okay? Walani abaihim. Kabura. Kabura means big. It's a very big statement. Very big wrong. A very grievous thing that they say. A very grievous, a big thing, a word that comes out of their mouths. They say not except a lie. This is not, not anything except a pure lie. Now what has happened is, those people who said Allah adopted himself, the Paulian Christianity, Paulian Christianity, what they did was, they had a Pope, and that Pope, you know, they, they abolished Sharia, there's no halal and haram, 
right? And there's nothing good to do anyway because Isa alayhi salatu wasalam has uh, died for their sins. Okay, so Jesus died for their sins. So there's no sense of guilt if you do anything wrong. And this religion became very perverted. It became tyrant. It was oppressive upon the Western people. And the people stood up against it. And this, from that time onwards, created an allergic reaction to the idea. Now, this was very important to keep in mind. How it affects the Muslim world today. I wish everybody could understand this. That when the reformation, the Christian reformation took place, and they rebelled against the, the, the Pope, and rebelled against the church at that time, and they created Protestantism, the Protestant religion, which is basically Christianity, that believes in the Bible, but we're not going to have anything to do with this institute of the of the Catholic Church, and we're not going to have anything to do with putting a pope on top of us. They had a, such a negative, negative, uh, re re allergic reaction to religion after that that this is what led to the secularism in World War One and World War Two, the situation that we are in today. Okay, so this is very, very fundamental in understanding the surah. And understanding that why we are where we are today. So, what happened? That you know the Pope, he was taking money and taxing the people, and 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 putting uh, you know just uh, ad hocly making rules and uh, and 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 so on and so forth. So then there was a reaction to that, especially after the Muslims came to Spain and spread the rational knowledge and the rationality that the Christian, uh, the Muslims brought oh, woke up the eyes of many Christians, right? And they said, this Pope is wrong. This is not how it should be. And they had an allergic reaction after the reform, Christian reformation, okay? After the reformation that took place, then there was a renaissance. And in that renaissance, there was a reaction because that whole time from Francis Bacon all the way to Nietzsche, what has been happening is a reaction to that reformation. Getting away from the church. And in, in reaction to that, they created liberalism. They created secularism. And shaitan, a door opened for shaitan to attack the world in a way that it had never been attacked. And to change the world in a way that it had never been changed. Because these Christians, they had an allergic reaction to religion. And when that ideas, and now just think about how things work at a subconscious level. When those ideas spilled over to the Muslim world, Muslims also that became part of the intelligentsia, that became educated, what happened? They also got that allergic reaction uh, dose or vaccination with them that came from that Christian history. It had nothing to do with our history or as as uh, or Muslims being irrational as, uh, in terms of having a religion. It was their problems and they, for, they superimposed their ideas upon us. And so when Muslims say we're going to establish the Khilafah or we want to establish the Khilafah, they're like, you want to go back to where we were. We had the church and the king and it was oppressive. Don't do that. And they're trying to impose their ideas and their situation and their experience with their Christianity and their corrupt popes upon us. Okay? And they're trying to make our scholars look like they're deaf. You know, that, 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 that our scholars are going to produce the same results that their popes did in the past. وَيُنذِرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدًا And Allah says, warn those who say Allah has adopted a son. مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ They have no knowledge of the truth. It's not knowledge what they have. وَلَا لِأَبَائِهِمْ Nor their forefathers had knowledge. So what did they have? That's a different question. كَبُرَ كَلِمَةً تَخْرُجُ مِنْ أَفْوَاهِمْ Evil is it that comes out of their mouth. إِنْ يَقُولُونَ إِلَّا كَذِبًا They don't say anything except for lies. Now this ayah has two meanings. فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِيُ النَّفْسَكَ O Prophet ﷺ, perhaps you will kill yourself. نَفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ Over, you know, grieving over them that they don't believe, that they're not believing in the truth, right? And this ayah was revealed to the Prophet at a time there was great persecution. So even at this time, the Prophet is grieving that they're not believing. فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِيُ النَّفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ إِنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا That they don't believe. بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ In this hadith, meaning the Qur'an, asafa, out of, out of sorrow and sadness for them. But the other meaning of this ayah is فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِيُ النَّفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ The athar in the same sense is used in Tutul Yaseen. O Prophet ﷺ, perhaps you will kill yourself over the athar, the traces, the effects of this Christianity that it will have in the world. When you, 
when you are told about this, when you are being warned about this, because the Prophet had knowledge of the unseen, when you see the effects of this, that how it's going to affect the Muslim, how it's going to affect the world, then perhaps it's like you want, you, you're going to kill yourself over, on, over this, over the traces and the effects this is going to leave on the world. That they don't believe in the truth and they have adopted this, this statement that Allah has taken a son and the results of those seeds, what it's going to bring about in the coming years, a thousand years from now. That they don't believe in this Quran. Uh, and the uh, out of out of sadness for them, the prophet may ki- it, it, it's like as if he would ki- kill himself. It would be so hard upon the prophet sallallahu to know that this is all going to happen, and yet he has to bear this, right? He has to bear this. So anyway, inna jalla ma'al al-ardi very, this is the central ayah of the surah. And that's why the first ten and the last ten are important. إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا مَعَلَ الْأَرْضِ زِينَةً لَهَا We have made what is on this earth zina, beauty. But it's like a, a veneer, it's glitter, it's dazzling, it's the dazzling exterior. It's not real, but it looks real. It's, it, you know, it, it makes you, it seduces you, right, with its glitter. It seduces. إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا مَعَلَ الْأَرْضِ زِينَةً لَهَا we, Whatever we may put up on this earth, Made, made this earth into an adornment, into a zina laha. And to, when, when you become lost in dunya, when you get lost, uh, in this zina, then, you know, you, it's hard to do good deeds. It's hard to be right. It's hard not to be fake, right? You can do sometimes good and sometimes bad, and you have a mixture of good and bad, but you can't be in the state of doing all good when you are so dazzled by dunya. So then what happened to the Muslim world? When the Western world came, especially in the early part of this century, you know, nowadays we can see some of the, alhamdulillah, the fruits of, of what they have, the seeds that they've sowed through the secularism and liberalism and all the other uh, wrong things that they've done, right? We can see now the effects and a person who has eyes to see and ears to hear, right? And ha- who has a nur in his heart can begin to see the, the viciousness and the evilness of everything that has been done. But previously, Right? And even now, for many of them, right? Who are lost in dunya, lost in the zina, right? Uh, and, and what will happen, right? They're lost in the zina so much that, and it's hard to do good deeds. It's hard to give sadaqah to the masjid and sadaqah to the poor and, you know, so on and so forth. <inaudible> to test you. Ayyuhum, <inaudible> which of them, ahsanu <inaudible> amala, which of them will do good deeds? That's the test. And, on contrast to that is the seduction of the world, the seduction of the beauty of this world. You come into this world of cause and effect and what has been made out of this world of cause and effect, you know, you come into this world and you look at the technology, you look at the iPhone, you look at the computer, you look at the corporate corporations and how they produce things and you look at this whole fancy, sophisticated, fancy world and you can get lost in it so much. You know, it's just like, uh, the, you know, the moth, is always attracted to the light, okay? The moth is always attracted to the light. So what happens is, on the one side, you have the truth, and the other side, you have this light that's going to put you into the fire, okay? And it's your choice. You want to go to the truth, you want to go to Allah, you want to go to the akhirah, or you want to get burnt into this fire. And whatever, what, whatever we put on this earth will be made flat, it's like when you harvest the crops and everything is taken out and it's all flat, where there will be no skyscrapers, there will no be tall buildings, there will be no beautiful hotels and, you know, all these uh, amusement parks and all this thing that we've created, it'll be all gone. There'll be no up and down, it'll all be leveled out. وَإِنَّ لَجَائِلُونَ مَا عَلَيْهَا سَعِيدًا جُرُوزًا And yes, there, it was zina and an illusion and uh, now it's all gone. Things of the dunya. Now comes the story of the Ashabul Kahf. Okay. Um Hasibta Anna Ashabul Kahfi wa Rahimi Kanu min Ayatina Ajaba. Now there are different opinions about who are the Ashabul Kahf, about five of them. And are Ashabul Kahf and Ar Rahim. Ar Rahim, uh, okay, one important point I want to mention here. Kahf and Ghar. Kahf means cave. Ghar means also cave. Idhuma fil ghar. When they were both in the 
cave, meaning Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and Abu Bakr. This is in the Quran. But Kahf is a big cave, a open cave, right? That it is, it is not hidden. It is open. So this gives us a clue of which of the five different ideas of who are the Ashabul Kahf. It can p help us pinpoint that by the word Kahf itself. Um, hasibta anna ashab al kahfi did you find did you calculate did you think anna ashab al kahf the people of the kahf war raqim now imam bukhari believes ashab al kahf and ashab al raqim are two different groups of people they're totally separate right and the other opinion is no it's the pe the people of the cave and al raqim is the dog the other opinion is Ashab al Kahf is Ashab al Kahf, the seven sleepers, you can say, even though we don't know their exact numbers. But most likely, seven according to the Quran, which I'll come to later. وَأَنَّ أَصْحَابِ الْكَحْفِ وَالْرَقِيمِ is referring to the inscription, the inscription that is written on their grave. That, you know, there's an inscription by their grave that says these are the Ashab al Kahf or their names, or there is a graveyard there with inscriptions. The other opinion is Ashab al Kahf is the people of the cave. They were in the cave, but they came from the city called Ar Raqim. Okay? They came from the city of Ar Raqim. So there are many, many different opinions in this regard. Uh, by the way, just to mention Imam Bukhari's uh, opinion, Ar Raqim. Which is, he says, Ashab al Kahf are the people mentioned in Quran. Ar Raqim is the men, is the people mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet that when they were three believers, they were in a cave and the stone came in the front and they did dua to Allah with their good deeds and the stone was removed. So this is also an example of something supernatural. This is the opinion of Imam Bukhari in this case. Uh, but this is not actually in congruency with the rest of the story. Inshallah, we will get to that. So I'm going to actually talk about one of the opinions, which is my opinion of the five different scenarios up till now. As knowledge increases, a person's opinion can change. But uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَمْ أَنَّ الْكَحْفِ وَالرَّقِيمِ كَانُوا مِنْ آيَاتٍ عَجَبًا Did you find it strange and wondrous that, about the Ashab al-Kahf? Now, there's one question that I raised in the beginning, that why did the Jews ask about this? Why did the Jews ask about Ashab al-Kahf? I will, inshallah ta'ala, touch upon that another time. But anyway, this situation, because it's deal, it's the, the start of the discussion is of Christianity. So this is related to that. Meaning within the context of the Quran itself. Okay. Warn the people who've taken a, a son. Warn those that say Allah has taken a son. So this is, you could say, a story that relates to that situation. Because this is referring to a time where the king, okay, uh, Dios was his name, and uh, he saw many forms of Christianity, right? Because after Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, there are many, many forms of Christianity, and he didn't know which form to accept. And 300 years had passed because they had been sleeping for 300 years. And so after 300 years, there was a lot of confusion, which, you know, some people are saying Jesus is God, some saying he's a prophet, some saying he's a messiah, some saying this, some saying that. And some of those versions were okay with Christi uh, with Judaism even, because he was, after all, in a part of Bani Israel. He was a Jewish uh, person. And so, so some people amongst the uh, Jewish people, amongst the Jewish people, they, they, they could have accepted and did accept different forms, some of the forms of Christianity, but not the form of Christianity which Roman Catholics later on became, which is a separate issue. But until the time of the Prophet ﷺ, now which is 600 years. So this, uh, this 600 years after the Prophet ﷺ. So 300 years after Isa ﷺ, there's confusion on what is true Christianity. And now, up till the time of the Prophet ﷺ, Christians were celebrating the an annual festivities regarding Ashab al -Kahf. And they would be, you know, there would be uh, talks, gibbons in his, the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. He mentions the seven sleepers, okay? He mentions the Ashab al Kahf. So this is there in Western literature. Even today you can find this. But I'm going to show you something even more interesting than that. Um, hasibta an Ashab al Kahfi wa Raqim. Now I'm going to translate it as I see. Okay? Uh, up till today. Um, hasibta, O Prophet sallallahu did you, uh, think that Ashab al Kahf and the inscription that was put by their grave 
That this is amongst the strange thing that there was such a people that Allah put to sleep for 310 years. And so what I want to show you about, where were they? Uh, so my opinion up till now, because when I traveled to Turkey and I did, you know, I was uh, doing uh, quite a lot of research at that time. So I want to share with you some of the things. I wanted to upload those videos, but I just have never had the time to, to, to upload those videos. So I'm going to show you some very interesting things if I can, inshallah ta'ala. Now, you know Ashab al-Kahf were uh, living at a time where the, 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 the people were pagan, okay? And they were pagan, they were pagan people, and then they went to the cave for protection, okay? So this uh, Christianity moved into uh, this area of what we call today Turkey. Okay, Anatolia, which Dr. Omer has been talking uh, has talked about. Um, Anatolia is one of those areas. This whole area, okay, one of those areas is Ephesus. Ephesus, okay, Ephesus is one of those areas that where Christianity had spread after paganism. So we know the Romans were pagans and then they became Christians, okay. And so we have the remains of that, okay. So let me just, uh, I can show you that these are some of these remains, uh, but let me show you some of the pagan things that were being done, right? Um, <clears throat> so, like, look over here, you can see their gods, right, that they would worship, um, and uh, uh, different forms of idols, right? And uh, so, so this was there, and then this society became Christian. And this society has a very interesting, uh, you could say, this is a marketplace that was there long, long time ago. So there is a cave, there is the, there's the transference from being pagan to Christianity. So this place has a lot of historical churches, okay, a lot of historical church, churches. Then number two, this place uh, has uh, this, this, okay, so, 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 so from paganism to Christianity, it has uh, a city by these, uh, by, by this mountainous big caves, okay, a city by um, big caves, okay, and number three, and you will find this very interesting, is that there is a dog, a, a very interesting species, a very interesting breed. When I saw this dog in Turkey sitting by a, like an entrance of a cave, literally, Okay, it, uh, it, uh, the entrance of the cave, this dog sitting there. Okay, these are dogs that are specific to that region. They are called, uh, they're called, uh, Kurgle, uh, uh, the Kurdish Kungle dogs. Okay, uh, let me just show this to you like this. Okay, these dogs are huge. And they fit the description Quran gives about dogs. And this was one of the reasons. So I was like calculating in my mind when I was over there. I was thinking, okay, there's paganism to Christianity. It's very clear. You have like big monuments of paganism. And then you have monuments of Christianity. We know Christianity came after. We know paganism was there before. We know that there, seven sleepers are mentioned in, 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 in Western literature. They are there. We know that, uh, you know, that this is a big cave. Like I said, the difference between Ghar and Kahf, okay? Then, when I saw these dogs, and when I heard about these dogs, oh my God, I was like, subhanAllah, what are the, you know, what are the chances, right? I mean, these are huge dogs. Uh, these are dogs that you, you wouldn't, you, nobody would want to like mess with these dogs. I mean, these are, these are big, big dogs. Okay. And, and we'll see the Quranic description of the dog. Okay. It's the type of dog that you don't really want to go near him. Okay. If, if there's no, no master there, if there's no one there, right, you don't want to be the one that is going to be, uh, going to be uh, dealing with this dog chasing you, and trust me, these are very loyal dogs because I found out, because I was interested in actually buying them, and so, you know, they would cost about $2,000, but that's not the biggest expense. The biggest expense is feeding them, and they need a big land to to live. These Kurgle dogs, these are like 
big dogs. When I saw this, I was like, subhanAllah, this is, you know, when Allah says, um, hasibta anna ashab al-kahfi wa raqimi kanu min ayatin ajab, are amongst their very strange signs. I was looking at this dog, I was like, this dog is a strange sign. Allahu a'lam, I could be wrong, but this is my, um, it's an in informed opinion, you can say. It's an informed opinion, but it could be possibly wrong, and Allah knows best. You know, you got a, you got a dog like that looking at you and standing in front of a cave, with no niche and no master, you're not going to go near it, right? This is not like some small dog or even a bulldog. This is a, a dog that's like could be like bigger than you. Okay, so um, and when the youth they had uh, they had left the the town that they were living in because they were being forced to make sacrifices to the false gods and they didn't want to accept that and so they they left the the place right just like we may be forced to leave our houses and live in the caves or go to the mountains like the prophet told us sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the end of times because we may be forced to do things in the city that we cannot do and it you know faqalu rabbana atina or that we should not do rabbana atina min ladunka rahma oh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this dua in this time everyone should memorize if you haven't memorized this dua yet this ramadan memorize this dua ayah number 10 of stukaf rabbana atina min ladunka this min ladunka is very special meaning especially specifically by the grace and by the special mercy of allah rabbana atina min ladunka rahma allah give us from your very special mercy wa hayyi' lana min amrina rashada and prepare us for our affairs to be mature. You know, not just guidance, but when guidance becomes mature, it becomes rushed. This ayah is also very interesting. interesting. And we struck, the literal meaning is to hit or to strike, okay? Or to, you could say, uh, touch or hit, any of these, or, or even rub. Uh, so we struck their ears, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them to sleep by covering their ears, okay? The uh, the thing is, is that uh, we now know in, in chiropractor, you know, in chiropractors know this and, and, and different alternative medicine talks about this, that uh, striking the ears and rubbing the ears Okay, puts a person to sleep. And I remember uh, this came to my mind after, uh, or this became to my consciousness when a Muslim jinni told me once that when you're reading Quran and such and such person press their ears, it will help them go to sleep. So this is also something known in the jinn world. Allahu A'lam. Okay, so Allah anyhow says, فَضْرَبْنَا عَلَىٰ آذَانِهِمْ And we cast a cover of sleep, you can say, over their ears. Meaning when you're asleep, you can't hear anything, right? That's like the, the, one of the things that happens. There's an interesting relationship between sleep and ears, which, um, which I'm not going to go into right now. For many, many years, for years, uh, that, for many years, they were put to sleep. It doesn't mention how much yet, okay? Then Allah says, then we woke them up, we, we raised them up, so that we will know. Now over here, it doesn't mean that Allah didn't know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, already knows. If you actually look at the word ilm, it becomes very clear. So that we make apparent, so we manifest, so we, that we show. Which of the two parties, which of the two parties had a better understanding of when they uh, how long they were in the cave. Okay? We relate to you their qasas, their story, their event with haq, in truth. They were a group of people that believed in their, their Rabb. آمنوا بربهم وزدناهم هدى and then Allah increased them in guidance. Allah مجعلنا منهم may Allah subhanahu wa taala increase us in our guidance too, especially to say things that are difficult to say. وربطنا على قلوبهم and we gave strength to their heart. ربطنا على قلوبهم 
إذ قاموا when they stood up فقالوا and they said ربنا رب السماوات والأرض now they're standing before the king and they're saying ربنا رب السماوات والأرض our our رب our caretaker our Allah is رب السماوات والأرض he's the one who takes care of the heavens and the earth لن ندوا من دونه إلها and we will not call upon any other gods uh, will not call upon the gods okay other than him لَقَدْ قُلْنَا إِذَا شَطَطَ If we do so, it would be a great transgression. Here's another sign that they would be living in a place where there would not be one God, but many gods. We've already talked about this paganism, right? هَأُولَاءِ قَوْمُنَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِهِ آلِهَا Okay? And then they say, هَأُولَاءِ قَوْمُنَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِهِ آلِهَا And then these people of ours, they've taken... Other gods, other than Allah, meaning other than Him Himself, um, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal, other than Allah Azza wa Jal, لو لا يأتوا عليهم بسلطان بين, even though Allah has not sent down any any proof for this at all, Allah has not asked for us to do such a thing. فمن أظلم ممن افترى على الله الكذبة, and Allah says, who can be more wrong than the one who makes a lie or invents a lie against uh, against Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. وَإِذِ اَعْتَزَلْتُمُوهُمْ Now this is very important. اعتزال and uh, اعتزال means to leave. Okay? And اعتزال means to leave to protect your iman, to make your iman strong. Hijrah is to move from one place to the next place for the support and the nusra of deen. When you do khalwa, which means you remove yourself from society for a small time period so you can get back into your fitra state, your normal state, and reflect upon the ayat of Allah. You know, you can have alone time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So another example of that is, muhum. This is also used for Maryam. And this is also used for the Ashab al-Kahf. To remove yourself, to keep yourself away from fitnas. Okay? So this is different from Hijrah. Hijrah is mentioned in the previous surah, the sister surah. Over there is, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the dua to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbi adkhilni mudkhala sidki wa akhrijni mukhrada sidki wa ja'alni min ladunka sultan al nasira When you make hijrah, it's for nusrah. And when it is to protect your iman, it is khalwa or i'tizal. Okay? Uh, so, wa idha i'tazaltu muhum. And when you ha had withdrawn from them, when you had left them. Okay? So, why did they leave? وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Because of what they used to worship other than Allah. إِلَى الْكَحْفِ So they went to the cave. يَنْشُرْ لَكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ مِنْ رَحْمَتِي وَيُهَيِّئْ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَمْرِكُمْ مِرْفَقَى So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He would spread His mercy upon you. Like the Prophet said, there will come a time where the one who's sleeping is better than the one that's awake. Okay? Sleep is the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in a time of fitna. When you feel like doing sin, go to sleep. Okay? وَإِذْ أَزَلْتُمُوهُمْ وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَأَوْ إِلَى الْكَحْفِ يَنْشُرْ لَكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ مِنْ رَحْمَتِي وَهَيِّئْ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَمْرِكُمْ مِنْ رَفَقَى And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make your affair easier for you. He would facilitate for you. Now this cave is a cave that would not be directly facing the sun. So this is the next uh, aspect of this. وَتَرَى الشَّمْسَ إِذَا تَلْعَدْ تَزَاوِرُ أَنْ كَحْفِهِمْ ذَاتَ الْيَمِينَ وَإِذَا غَرَبَتْ تَقْرِدُمْ ذَاتَ الشِّمَالِ Right? When you see the sun come out, إِذَا تَلْعَدْ When it rises, تَزَاوَرُ أَنْ كَحْفِهِمْ Then it passes away from the, it, it goes away from the cape ذَاتَ الْأَنْ On the right side. وَإِذَا غَرَبَتْ And when the sunset is happening, تَرْ تَقْرِدُهُمْ ذَاتَ الشِّمَالِ Then it withdraws for them on the uh, the right side. وَهُمْ فِي فَجْوَةٍ مِّنْهُ And they are in the middle of this uh, uh, cave. So the sunlight's not going directly. The sun is coming in uh, from right, uh, going from right to left. And in the process, the sun is not going directly into the cave. Okay. وَذَلِكَ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ And that is amongst the signs of Allah. وَمَنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ In what sense? That maybe, I'm saying, as a story, as an event, okay, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them in a place where they would not be uh, directly under the sun, but the warmth would be there. The sun's effects are there, but the sun is not going, is not, uh, uh, is not going into the cave, because then it's a big cave with a big opening, people would be able to see, okay. 
uh, it could also mean ذَلِكَ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ This is amongst the signs of Allah that this would tell you, this is an ayah, this is a sign to tell you where they are, who they are. مَنْ يَحْدِ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ الْمُحْدَدْ Whoever Allah guides, Allah guides. وَمَنْ يُدْلِلْ فَلَنْ تَجِدَ لَهُ وَلِيًّا مُرْشِدًا And whoever Allah leads astray, he will find for himself no murshid to, no, uh, no, no wali or murshid to guide him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and keep us away from the wrong path. And while they were in the uh, cave, what was happening? And you know, we know this in 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 in, in the modern uh, in the nursing field and in the medical field. And you would think that they're awake while they were asleep. One reason, because we were moving them from the right side to the left side, so they wouldn't have what is called bed sores. Okay, because if your body's on one side too much, it then you know then the sores begin to develop, so you have to change the person. Sometimes when somebody's in a critical situation, a nurse's job is to to move the uh, to uh, move the body from one position to the next position, so bed sores don't develop. <coughs> now, وَكَلْبُهُمْ and their dog, بَاسِطٌ Okay, he has, it's something that has long زَرَعِيهِ بِالْوَصِيدِ has long legs that are stretched out. Zara'ihi, it's, it's uh, the two legs in the front, they're stretched out, they're long. Bil wasid, right in front of the gate of the cave. Wa idha tala'at alayhim, tawallayta minhum firaran, wa la mulita minhum ru'ba. And if you happen to fall upon them, meaning you happen to come to near that cave, and then what? Well, uh, you would have happened to see that dog, right? La walita alayhim. وَلَّيْتَ And you would have turned away minhum from them. Right? فِرَارًا In a hurry. You would have been like, no way I'm going near this thing. Right? وَلَمُلِعْتَ مِنْهُمْ رُعْبَ And your heart would have been filled with fear looking at this dog. Okay? So, this is the description of the dog. What I want to show you is, inshallah, a picture of the cave uh, very quickly. Okay? So... Uh, I think so this is the picture of the cave if you can see it right uh, and so um, yeah I think I should have made these screens bigger when I was showing these pictures but this is the picture of the cave okay and uh, so uh, in fact let me do that right now inshallah very quickly just show you some of the pictures inshallah so this is the picture of the uh, cave that the one that I'm referring to okay and that Allah knows best about. But this is a pretty big cave and a place where sunlight doesn't go in directly into the cave, but just passes by it. Okay. And then there is the inscriptions here. This is, uh, then you know the dogs in this location. And then uh, let me just go back and uh, show you some of the. Uh, so these are like the pagan gods. Okay. And uh, then you also have the, um, again, some more of the. Uh, pagan gods here and then you also have uh, uh, again more of the pagan gods I'm trying to get to the point where it starts showing the churches and stuff so that um, uh, and then let me get to some of the so these are now some of the bigger churches that some of the ancient and very first uh, established churches that were there okay so this is a place that Clearly there is a change from, uh, you can see also church stuff over here, okay? So this was a, um, uh, a one of the uh, things that were there, okay? So now let's go back to the verses of the Quran very quickly. Uh, now this ayah is very important. This is why we raised them, Allah says. This is how we raised them. So they will ask one another, what? So one of them said, how much, how much did you sleep? How long? So one of them said, they said, a day or part of a day. So one of them said, Allah knows best how much time we spent here. One of the difficulties of the modern time is difficult for people to say Allah knows best. We don't have to know everything. 
We don't have to know everything. What we have to know is guidance. We have to know the solutions. And so we don't have to have to know. Allah knows best how long you uh, were uh, sleeping. Then now this is very interesting. Now in order to save their iman from tyranny, they had to leave. Okay, because they were being asked to do things that could not be accepted as acceptable as as Muslims for them. So they said, okay, look, you know, obviously they've slept 300 years, 310 years. They've slept a long time. They're pretty hungry, probably, right? Go ahead, send one of you with your coins. Warak is silver coins. But warak also means, interestingly enough, warak means, warakhi means silver coins. Warak means paper money. So just interesting the, the similarity uh, of this word waraq. Okay. Be waraqi uh, kum. Go ahead. Uh, go into the city with these silver coins. Hadi ila al-Madina. These silver coins that we have, go with them to the city. Fanzur ayuha azka ta'am. Ayuha azka ta'am. Ayuha azka. Which of them is pure? Ta'am. Food. Fan go and see which of them is pure food one of the problems is that we live in a time where number one there's tyranny and we might have to run away save our iman okay protect our iman and a time where there will be no silver coins and a time where there will be no pure food to eat so unless you get prepared unless you buy the silver coins unless you make sure you have halal ways of growing your own halal food. So then they would come with pure risk to us. And then number next, by the way, this word is, in terms of the number of words in Quran, this is the halfway point. فَلْيَتَلَطَّفْ means be careful. So this is the middle word of the, in the whole of the middle of the word. The middle word of Quran is فَلْيَتَلَطَّفْ be careful. وَلَا يُشْعِرَنَّ بِكُمْ أَحَدًا Don't let anyone find out who you are. Be careful now. You're going to go to the city if they discover you because they didn't know that the whole three hundred years have gone by. But you know they're thinking you have to go to the city. You need to get food for us. So just be careful when you go. Okay. Now over here, I want to mention something. Uh, this will come up, uh, in, in, and let's continue, inshallah. Now, if you go to the city, and they catch you, right, because they think that they're still living in their, their time, where they're pagans, and they're, now they probably have a warrant out for these seven people. So, If they find you now, right, it's like you, you have, uh, they, they will, you know, uh, they will um, stone you. يَرْجُمُوكُمْ أَوْ يُعِيدُكُمْ فِي مِلَّتِهِمْ Or they'll turn you back to their way of life. وَلَن تُفْلِهُ إِذًا أَبَدًا And if you, if that happens, then you'll have, there's no chance of falah for you. Right? Your chances are either going to be to die if you get caught, or you will t be turned into them, and then you will have no success at all. Okay? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَذَلِكَ أَعْثَرْنَ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَعْلَمَ أَنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقٌ This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أَعْثَرْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to them. Meaning to the new, now they woke up after 300 years, they go to the city, they say, oh what are these, what are these coins you have? These are like from long time ago, you know, these are like ancient coins. And then they, the matter was brought before the king and the king, the other opinion is that the king then had, you know, some inscription about the story of theirs, right? And uh, and perhaps, I'm just uh, speculating here a little bit, but perhaps that uh, if you are in a situation where there are many forms of Christianity and you're the king thinking, which form of Christianity is real? And you know that long time ago there was an event of the first seven people to accept the true faith, which is the Christianity of that time. They were the first people to accept Christianity and they kind of like vanished. Right now you find out, you go, you say, oh, these, these might be those seven people. So let's see what was written about them when this event happened. Some sort of inscription that they had. Okay. And then this is how they, they, this is why they were able to recognize and ask the question is that something was on record for them to ask through. Okay. Allahu A'lam. Allah knows best 
this is just uh, you can say putting the dots together but Allah knows best and only Allah knows وَكَذَلِكَ أَثَرْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَعْلَمُ أَنَّ وَعْدُ اللَّهِ حَقٍ And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to reveal, open manifest, that you will know that the promise of Allah is true. Okay? وَأَنَّ السَّاعَةَ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهَا That the hour, meaning the day of judgment, there's no doubt about it. إِذْ يَتَنَازَعُوا بَيْنَهُمْ أَمْرَهُمْ And because now they found this inscription, Right about him, some. Uh, this is what Raqim, one of the meanings of Raqim. So now they have some inscription about him uh, or about them. So now they started to uh, argue about their what to do. Right? Is yatanazau baynahum amrahum? فقالوا ابن عليهم بنيانا. So they said, okay, why don't we make a, a building? ربهم أعلم بهم. Uh, Allah knows best. Just make some building there, and then that will be enough. قال الذين غلبوا على أمرهم and those people that whose opinion was taken was that we will make that place into a masjid. So that ha place, if you dig it out, has to be a place where it was. You could see some, uh, you know, some archaeological evidence that there was prayers and some sort of ceremonies being done in that place, and so on and so forth. Okay. So, uh, what does Allah say? Now this is interesting. So they will say there were three and Rabiuhum Kalbuhum and the fourth of them was the dog. And they'll some will say five and the fifth was the dog. Rajman Bil Raib. They're just playing, throwing darts in the air. They don't know what they're saying. وَيَقُولُونَ And they say, سَبْعَةٌ وَثَامِنُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ And the seventh one was their dog. Now, when you analyze this part of the ayah, even again, right? It's not important, but just from a grammatical perspective, number one was three, and the fourth is the dog. This is what they say. But there's no uh, and in between this, and I'll tell you why. And then they say they're five, and the sixth one is the dog. Rajman bil ghaib. Then Allah says they're throwing in the darts. For these two, Allah specifically says, Rajman bil ghaib. This is not the right opinion. So, three is not the right opinion. Five is not the right opinion. From which Allah tells us that they must be, you know, it's a sign that they must be an odd number. sab'atun. But there were seven. وَثَامِنُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ And then Allah adds the wa here to emphasize the point and the seventh is their, the eighth is their dog. But there's also another place where you can, if you analyze the ayah, now I'll go back up, when they were talking to one another, okay? Uh, when they were talking to one another, you will see, uh, Allah raised them, so they'll ask each other the question. So said uh, one of the sayers amongst them, uh, So one person asked the question. One person asked the question. Well, and then قالوا comes for minimum three, right? So that's at least four. And then the answer is قالوا again at least three. So, one plus three plus three, at least seven. Okay? رَبُّكُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا لَبِثْتُمْ Allah knows best how long you stayed. So, when you calculate the the jama jama and the wahid sila, okay, the singular, who asked the question, and then the two answers. So, this is the person asking the question, and the people giving the answer are at least six. Okay? Uh, okay. Uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَقُولُونَ سَبْعَةٌ وَثَامِنُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ Look, there are seven, and the seventh is their dog. قُلْ رَبِّ أَعْلَمُ بِعِدَّتِهِمْ مَا يَعْلَمُهُمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ And Allah knows best their numbers, number one. وَمَا يَعْلَمُهُمْ And regarding the question that the Jews were asking, the truth of them no one really knows, إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ Except for a few. But some more information has now been revealed to you by Prophet Muhammad that maybe you didn't even know. 
فلا تماري فيهم إلا مراء ظاهرا ولا تستفي ولا تستف فيهم منهم أحدا. Then Allah سبحانه وتعالى says ولا تماري فيهم إلا مراء ظاهرا and don't argue about them except what is obvious. Meaning stick to what is what is known in the in the world of cause and effect, right? ولا تستف فيهم منهم أحدا and even in that don't Every question is not important. Stick to the main main issues, okay? Then going into who are these seven sleepers, what were their names, how many they were. So, so, وَلَا تَسْتَفْتِي فِيهِمْ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدَ Any one of them, don't go into the details of who they were and what they were names and so on and so forth, okay? Now, you know the Jewish rabbis had asked the Prophet wasallam the three questions. And the, when they came to the Prophet and asked him, you know, the Prophet said, okay, I'll tell you tomorrow. Because Jibreel was coming to the Prophet ﷺ every day. So Allah, now now that Jibreel didn't come for many days, so now it is being told to the Prophet ﷺ. And this surah is very interesting also in the sense of how many adhkar that are generally there, part of the Muslim routine or the Islamic routine. Like, Alhamdulillah is there. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah is in this surah. Insha'Allah is in this surah, so on and so forth. You'll find many of these kalimats in this surah that are very important because we will, because when when your eye becomes blind and you only see the dunya, then you don't have value for these words. You don't. You when you see a flower, you don't say Subhanallah. When something good comes to you, you don't say Alhamdulillah. When you say you'll do something tomorrow, you don't say Insha'Allah. So the lesson about Insha'Allah is being given here. And if you forget to say them, that you forget to say Insha'Allah. Uh, what to do? If you forget to say Alhamdulillah, what to do? If you forget to say Subhanallah, what to do? وَلَا تَقُولُ لَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ And don't say for anything. إِنِّي فَائِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدَى That I'll do this tomorrow. Don't say that. إِلَّا except أَنْ يَشَاءَ الله. Except if Allah wills. And the other benefit of that is, perhaps Allah has something better in store for you. So you say, I will do this inshallah if Allah wills. And the intention could also be, according to this ayah, as you'll see, that Perhaps Allah wills even something better. Maybe there's another door that's open. And, and, you, and so you should leave the matter in, matters in Allah's hands. This is the real issue. It's not even that Allah will, inshallah, help me do what I want to do. No. But in, I'm leaving it in Allah's hands. I might get something better. Or Allah, Allah, if Allah wants it, might not happen. And if Allah wants it, will happen. I'm leaving it in Allah's hands. What will happen? إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ Allah, Except by the will of Allah. By the pleasure of Allah. وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيب And remember Allah when you forget. Meaning if you forget to say inshallah or alhamdulillah, then remember Allah at that time, right? You then just say to yourself, yes, yes, inshallah, I, I will do that if Allah allows me to do that. Right? وَقُلْ And say, O Prophet ﷺ, perhaps, أَنْ يَهْدِيَنِي رَبِّي My Rabb, will guide me لِأَقْرَبَ مِنْ هَذَا رَشَدًا He will guide me to a way that is more mature than this, more better than this. There's more khayr in that. So never forget to say inshallah from this perspective. Okay? This is one of the reasons we've become blind because our inshallahs are blind, you can say. وَلَبِثُوا فِي كَحْفِهِمْ ثَلَاثَ مِئَةَ سِنِينَ وَزْدَادُوا تِسْعَةً And they stayed in the cave for 300 years plus you can increase nine years. This is by the lunar calendar. So by by solar calendar would be about 300 years, okay? وَلَبِثُوا فِي كَحْفِيمْ ثَلَاثَ مِئَةٍ سِنِينَ وَزْدَادُوا تِسْعَةً And then you increase nine years. But again, because it's a measurement of time, and uh, so then Allah says, قُلِ اللَّهُ, قل الله, uh, قل الله أَعْلَمُ بِمَا لَبِثُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best what and how and how long they actually were asleep. لَهُ غَيْبُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ for him is the heaven, is the unseens of the heavens and the earth. Abusir bihi wa asmi'. How beautiful is his seeing and how beautiful is his listening. What he sees and what he hears is nothing compared to the measurements that we make. Wa ma lahum min dunihi min waliyin wa la yushrik fi hukmihi ahada. Ma lahum ma lahum min dunihi min wali. They have no protector other than him. There's no protector other than him. He's the one who sees. He's the one who hears. He's the one who knows. وَلَا يُشْرِكْ Over there in the last ayah of Surah Bani Israel, وَكَبِّرْهُ تَكْبِيرًا And قُلْ لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدًا وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُلْكِ Allah accepts no one 
against his authority, you can say. Allah accepts no partners in authority. In his kingdom, in his dominion, he accepts no authority. Oh, and over here, وَلَا يُشْرِكُوا فِي حُكْمِهِ أَحَدًا In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his hukum, in his commands, he has no partners in his commands. Okay? Meaning, when Allah has given us commands, we can't choose other partners to Allah's commands. وَطْلُ مَا أُوْهِيَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ كِتَابِ رَبِّكَ Oh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, recite, مَا أُوْهِيَ إِلَيْكَ Whatever has been inspired to you, revealed to you from Allah, min kitabi rabbika, from the book of your Rabb. La mubaddila li kalimati. There's no changing the words of Allah. These are fixed. These rules are fixed, right? These sunnahs of Allah are fixed, right? And they will keep affecting human history. And walan tajidu min dunihi muntahada. And you will find no other protector other than Allah Azza wa Jal. He is the only real protector. He protected the Ashab al-Kahf, and inshallah, he will protect us in this time of fitan also. Now here are the instructions given to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are extremely, 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 extremely important. And for the jama'ah, and every Muslim should be part of a jama'ah. For any jama'ah, this is extremely important. How the leadership should be, how the members of the jama'ah should be. وَاسْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ And have sabr. O Prophet ﷺ, wasbir nafsak. Have sabr with yourself. Ma'al ladina yad'oona rabbahum bil ghadati wal ashiyin. Those who call, with those who call upon their Rabb. Bil ghadati wal ashiyin. In the mornings and the evenings. And people who yuriduna wajha. They seek Allah's pleasure. Wala ta'du aynaka anhum turidu zinat al hayat al dunya. O Prophet, your eyes should not be looking at Abu Jahal and Abu Sufyan and for these people to accept Islam. Just keep your eyes on the people, the believers, and those people that are in, actually interested in the happiness and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تُطِعْ مَنْ أَغْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ وَلَا تَعْدُ أَيْنَاكَ أَنْهُمْ And don't take your eyes away from them, meaning the believers. وَلَا تَعْدُ أَيْنَاكَ أَنْهُمْ تَلِيدُ نَعْزِينَةُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنِيَا Sorry, don't put your eyes upon those people that want the life of this world. وَلَا تُطِعْ مَنْ أَغْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ And don't follow the one whose heart has أَغْفَلْنَا We have covered his heart عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا from our dhikr وَاتَّبَعْ هَوَاهُ And those who follow their desires وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُطَ And their affair is uh, just completely negative, negative in the sense of acts in, in excessiveness. Okay, they they are they're not in the middle way. They're not in the balanced way. Okay, and the balanced way is this: that you are praying to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the morning and the evenings. This is according to the human, real human uh, fitra. Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. قُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَالْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَالْيَقْفُرْ Look, the haq is from your Rabb. The truth is from Allah. فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَالْيُؤْمِنْ Whoever desires, let him believe. وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَالْيَقْفُرْ And whoever whoever wants, he can deny the truth. إِنَّ أَعْتَدْنَا لِلْظَالِمِينَ نَارٌ أَحَاتَ بِهِمْ سُرَادِكُهَا Okay? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ أَعْتَدْنَا إِنَّ أَعْتَدْنَا لِلْظَالِمِينَ نَارٌ أَحَاتَ بِهِمْ And we have prepared for the wrongdoers a fire that will in, encompass them, will take them over, will, or will overwhelm them بِهِمْ سُرَادِكُهَا by its walls. So there will be these columns or walls that they will be like either changed to or the, these, the, this fire will overlap them from there. وَإِنْ يَسْتَغِيثُوا بِيُغَاثُوا بِمَا And if they seek uh, water, right? From you, they ask for water. يُغَاثُوا بِمَا إِنْ كَالْمُحْلِ يَشْوِ الْوُجُوءُ And if they seek water, Right? يُغَاثُ بِمَا إِنْ كَالْمُحْلِ يَشْوِ الْوُجُوهُ They will be given molten brass, which will يَشْوِ الْوُجُوهُ Which will burn their faces. بِعْسَ الشَّرَابُ وَسَأَتْ مُرْتَفَقَ And what an evil drink, what a bad drink it will be, and what a bad place it will be to be in. And in this way, there's also the simultaneous contrast. And إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ إِنَّا لَا نُذِيُوا أَجْرَ مَنْ أَحْسَنَ عَمَلًا Indeed, those people who believe and do good deeds, we will not put to waste 
their ajr, their good deeds. Whoever has done to the best of his ability the good actions. Okay. Now, uh, before I move forward, even though the, 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 here the next description is for them will be gardens, residential gardens, adn forever and ever, under which rivers will flow. Okay? And they will wear in it, you know, uh, you can say bracelets, right? Um, they will be uh, wearing these bracelets of gold. And uh, and they will be wearing green, like, uh, so there'll be an inner cloth and an outer cloth. And the inner cloth will be, uh, they will be uh, wearing these, you know, clothes of, of silk, right, uh, and brocade, uh, and what is tabarak. And then there will be a lighter, you can say more like, a, you know, sometimes a see-through cloth on top. So inner cloth and an outer cloth. What is tabarak muttakina fiha ala al-araik. And they will be reclining in their couches, that will be like decorated, okay? Ni'mat thawab wa hasanat murtafaqa. What a beautiful reward and what a beautiful place to be. Over here, I want to mention in the previous ayah where it told the Prophet sallallahu uh, In fact, the ayah before that I want to mention uh, about ayah number 27. O oh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, recite. What has been recited to you? Recite what has been given to you, has been inspired to you. Min kitab rabbik, right? Be why? Because in these times of difficulty, in times where you need to have refuge, in times where you need a protector, then the thing to do is to find solace, help, uh, spiritual insight through the reading of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? And then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that wasbir nafsika ma'alladina yad'una the da'i now this ayah is interesting because you know the da'i the one who's like the prophet or the one who's calling towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has you know over here Allah is saying don't look at the people of dunya right so but the pro but but when you do da'wah and you know you have a jama'ah and the jama'ah is of poor people then you know the da'i is thinking about them if an Umar or Hamza accepts Islam it'll be good even for the poor people and give them strength Right? If so, so some uh, so you have to give them time, right? If you don't give them time, then there then there is uh, the the, the poss there's good uh, a possibility of good in them accepting Islam and then helping everyone out. And one of them can be equal to a thousand of the poor in in terms of the work that and the resources that he's connected to. So so in in that sense, a da'i uh, has to focus on the people, the flock that's with him. But that doesn't mean he completely neglects the possibilities that are out there that if you can bring one of those uh, elite people or the rich and the famous, so to say, if you can bring them into your flock, if you can bring Umar into your flock, if you can bring Hamza into your flock, that it, some good can also come out of that. So it's not a complete ne negation in terms of da'wah, no, but in terms of that who you associate Right. And of course, the other thing is that you shouldn't spend time there to the point to the point where the people that are with you, the poor, they start feeling like, oh, he only gives time to the rich. No, but rather what those rich people have to come and sit with the poor. This is the thing. OK. So these are important guidelines for any Jamaah that is working in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, now, the issue of the garden, the man of the garden starts from here inshallah ta'ala okay so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says now this is very important because this talks about the biggest shirk of the modern times here's a man he worked hard he made a garden he made it very well wadrib lahum mathalan rajulaini ja'alna li ahadihima jannatain and give them the example of the two men ja'alna li ahadihima one of them had two gardens min a'nabin wa khaf he had two gardens of grapes and around the perimeter of the game the grapes was the date trees you know the date trees are very tall so they can protect from wind or, or anything like that and, and in there there was also a field for growing crops and so on and so forth so this is a person that who got involved fall, fell for the zinatul hayat al dunya and the problem is, he fell for the dunya that was very natural. It still could remind you of Allah, possibly. 
but we fell we fall for the world that's even unnatural okay wadrib lahum mathalan rajulayn ja'alna li ahadihima jannatayn min a'nab wa khaffafnahuma bi nakhl wa ja'alna baynahuma zar'a now what happens is so that as we read it becomes clear is that you know the the one person he's lost in dunya and he's so amazed and then you know he even says things that are uh, you can say uh, blasphemous uh like you know obviously allah loves me why else would i have these two gardens who are you to tell me anything to think of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then in the end when allah destroys his garden what does he say ya laytani oh i wish i wish i wish gosh i wish lam ushrik bi rabbi ahada i didn't do shirk with allah what was the shirk the shirk in this case you know in this surah doesn't mention any uh god or goddesses other you know uh, the shirk here is the belief in the world of cause and effect and the shirk that comes out of being seduced into that zinatul hayat ad dunya the zina of dunya that seduces you to the point of so much that you think that this zina has all your solutions and this zina is based upon the cause and effect okay so and these two gardens that he was given kilka al jannatayn atat ukulaha and these two gardens would give their full produce full, full fruit walam walam tadlim minhu shay'a and it would not do it wouldn't hold back anything nothing would be held back and not only he had these this this uh, you know uh, these these gardens wa fajjana khilalahuma nahara but between these gardens was a canal a stream of water it was self irrigated it was a perfect system and anyone that was seduced by the zina of dunya would be like wow i don't think this will, i don't think that anything can happen to this i got my security system outside i got my two gardens i got my other my other 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 you know things that i'm growing and i got a self irrigating system it's all automatic it's going to just produce itself automatic it's just not it's just going to automatically happen right we also tend to forget allah when things automatically happen with machines and 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 we used to forget allah when things were automatically happening in even in nature wa kana lahu thamarun and he had fruit thamar can here also mean children wa kana lahu thamarun fa qala li sahibi and he said to his friend right who doesn't have these resources okay and maybe he was a wali of allah he was a friend of allah right and the prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam man adha li waliyan fa azantu lahu al harb whoever becomes an enemy of my wali i declare war against him and so here he's like looking down upon this man who is kind of his friend but you know wa qala li sahibi he said to his friend wa huwa yuhawiruhu while he's having this conversation with him ana akthara minka i am so much more than you you know what do you know about the world i did all this do you know how much i struggled to get these trees and how much i did this and how much effort i did and do you know how much i had uh, you know i had how much labor i had to pay for this this is going to come up his investment in all of this how much investment i had to put in all of this and aksara min kamalan wa azu nafara i have a big labor force i have or it can also mean i have more manpower and more children and i have more wealth and this is you know i and then what happens وجعل ودخل جنته and he entered into his garden وهو ظالم لنفسه and he had darkness in his soul right he had he was doing wrong to himself قال ما and he looks at his creation from his perspective right he looks at his creation and he says قال ما اظن ان تبيد هذه ابدا so i don't think this will ever be destroyed this is so great what i've done it was really like look at look at i have this you know this defense system outside and you know i have my garden in the inside i have a self irrigating you know i really made wise decisions right and then he says ma adunnu sa'ata qa'ima i don't think the hour will come because now he's so invested in dunya that he doesn't want the hereafter wa ma adunnu sa'ata qa'ima wa in ruditu ila rabbi and even if i don't go back to my rabb even if i go la ajidanna khayran minha munqalaba i would surely find better there than here in return because why if i was a bad person why would allah give this to me right so he's not denying the existence of allah he's just thinking and this is in christianity nowadays by the way there's a principle called prosperity 
uh, principle, the prosperity principle, which is that you know that you know you're going to prosper if you're given the cause of of the church, then you will prosper. So this kind of like if, even if Allah, even if I do die and there is a day of judgment, then Allah is going to give me something better because obviously I must be doing something right. You know that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, has given me all this. This is the shirk of the modern time. One of the shirks of the modern time. Qala lahu sahibuhu wa huwa yuhawiruhu And the man that was his companion that was talking to him said Akafarta billadhi khalaqaka min turab Are you doing kufr? This thinking is kufr. Billadhi khalaqaka The one who created you min turab from dust Thumma nutfatin And then you became like a sperm drop Thumma and then you became like a, a, a man that is good looking, right? Proportioned you in the right way. And, and now you have, you know, you're saying these words about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now. Lakin hu Allahu Rabbi. That is my Allah. He is my Rabb. La ushriku bi Rabbi ahad. I don't do shirk with Allah. What is the shirk here? The denial of the day of judgment. It's the denial of Allah. And then this becomes even more clear. And denial of the day of judgment, it's based upon what? Being so seduced in dunya. That dunya as a whole, you know, one is your, I'm worshipping a certain idol. Right? I'm worshipping idol A and then idol B. Astaghfirullah. Or the whole dunya itself becomes a big idol. The here and the now in the world and the materialism becomes the idol. Instead of the materials from which you make the idol, the whole material world becomes an idol. This is the shirk of the modern times. Then what happens? Then he says, وَلَوْلَا إِذَا دَخَلْتَ jannatak." Then he says, why is it not that when you entered into your jannah, قُلْتَ Why was he doing wrong? Why was he entering into the uh, into the garden in, 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 in doing wrong to himself? Because he didn't do this. لَوْلَا إِذَا دَخَلْتَ jannatak قُلْتَ That it would have been better if you would have said, مَا شَاءَ Allah." MashaAllah. This is what Allah designed. This is what Allah wanted to happen. It wasn't just, it wasn't not even just astaghfirullah. It was not my knowledge. It was not my effort. It was not my doing. Qulta MashaAllah. If you only had said MashaAllah. La quwwata illa billah. There's no power, no force other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allowed all these things to happen. When you looked at your garden, you should have been thanking Allah. Look and be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead of thinking about how great you are. وَإِن تَرَنِي أَنَا أَقَلَّ مِنْكَ So his heart was hurt and he said, If you think, okay, if you think I'm less than you, مِنْكَ مَالًا وَوَلَدًا In wealth and in children, if I'm less than you, is that what you think? Then now he mentions all the different ways that this garden, Allah can make it just go away. Right? فَعَصَى رَبِّ أَنْ يُؤْتِيَنِي خَيْرًا مِنْ جَنَّتِكْ Number one. If Allah wants, He can give me a better jannah. If Allah wants, Allah can make me richer than the richest person in the world. Right? وَيُرْسِلَ عَلَيْهَا حُسْبَانًا Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can send a من السماء Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can send a like a tornado or some calamity from the sky. فَتُصْبِهَا سَعِيدًا زَلَقَ and it would become like smooth, like there would be no trees left. There could be a strong wind that comes and just takes it all away, right? Uh, or what will you do if all this water goes away? Your self-irrigating system would just go away. And then you, there will be no way for you to, to get it, to get that water, right? Then what happened? You know the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in which the Prophet said that there are some people, they're so close to Allah. But no one would give their, if they asked for marriage, the, the, the people would not say yes to him. There's some people close to Allah that if he did, she, he intercedes on someone's behalf, hey, can you help this person out? No one will listen to them. But this person, if he by mistake says something and swears upon Allah, Allah will make sure that that happens. And this is a hadith, by the way. Then what happened? As a result of this, like I said, this surah is about non, the power of non-prophets. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are people near Allah. They're not prophets, but they're near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then what happened? His whole garden, all his fruits, and all of those things, and his idea that there would be date palms, date palm trees protecting everything. Subhanallah. Then all his fruits, they were all encompassed. They were all surrounded into nothing. 
So he just found himself rubbing his hands like, what just happened? For all of his investments that he had been doing. Fiha in that garden. All those big trees that were supposed to be protectors, now they're on their, 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 you know, they're on the ground. Okay. وَيَقُولُ And then he said, when he had that loss, he said, يَا لَيْتَنِي Oh, I wish, I wish, لَمْ أُشْرِكْ بِرَبِّ أَحَدَ I wish I didn't do shirk with Allah. This is what happens when you make the world, the dunya itself, your God. And this is the main point, that why are Muslims not rising? Because this is what we have done today as a whole. وَلَمْ تَكُنْ لَهُ فِئَةٌ يَنْصُورُنَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ and there was no party that could help him against Allah. وَمَا كَانَ مُنْتَصِرًا And nor would he be himself able to defend himself. He himself was not in any situation to defend himself from the decisions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. هُنَالِكَ وَلَايَةٌ لِلَّهِ الْحَقِّ And there, in this, in this, the authority for Allah is true is one meaning. Walaya also means protector. Who did Allah protect? Allah protected that other man, what he said. هُنَالِكَ وَلَاعَةُ لِلَّهِ الْحَقِّ هُوَ خَيْرٌ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ أُقْبًا He is best in reward and he is best in the outcome that happens. It's the best. Because at least now he lost his garden, right? Many of us may lose our garden in this new world order if we are true, if true to ourselves and true to our deen. We may have to leave everything, right? And go to the cave. But you will at least find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You may lose your dunya, but you find your akhirah. So Allah says, وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Give them the example of the life of this world. كَمَا إِنْ أَنزَلْنَهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَأَخْطَلَتَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ Like this, and the water comes from the sky. It comes in, to the earth. And then the, uh, the, the vegetation and the plants and the fruits, they come out. فَأَخْطَلَتَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ فَأَصْبَحَ حَشِيمًا تَزْرُوهُ الْرِيَاهِ Then the end of that is, you know, first the tree looks strong and big and beautiful and giving fruits. But the end of that is, they're just scattered remnants. Okay? It's just uh, pieces of that, uh, the tree that once was so big, just they're left on the ground. Okay? When it finally dies, then it's just, not, so this is a cycle. In the same way, the ruh came from the top, and then our bodies are from the earth, right? From the dust. And you have this huge, beautiful tree, this person. But the ending is that, tazruhu riyah. You know, Hashim and Tazbuhu Riyah, fragments, small, small fragments are left. You go to your grave and you are decomposed into small little fragments going into different parts of the world. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is definitely the one who has power over all things. Now, the explanation of that zina that I've been talking about here Al Malu Al Banun, wealth and children. Zina Tul Hayat al Dunya. This is zina of Dunya. Of the life of this world. But the real thing for you, وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتُ خَيْرٌ in the رَبِّكَ What will remain forever is the good deeds. There are better خَيْرٌ in the رَبِّكَ before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ amala. And there, if you have hope, this is what you should have hope in. You should have hope not in your wealth and what you will do in your investments. Yes, you can do that too. But the real priority is for the hereafter. Then Allah talk now again talk about the day of judgment and that flattening out that's mentioned over and over again. الجبال, the day we will remove the mountains. And you will find the earth like a uh you know like a flat, okay? Uh and we will gather them all together and no one is going to be able to escape or be missing on that day. On the day of judgment, meaning. Then Allah says, وَعُرِضُ عَلَىٰ رَبِّكَ صَفَّىٰ And they will be presented before Allah in one line. لَقَدْ جِعْتُمُونَا Today you have come before us. كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً In the same way that you were created the first time. Meaning what? When we were in our souls, we were all before Allah. And we were all lined up. And Allah said, Alastu bi rabbikum. Am I not your Rabb? 
قالوا بلا and we said yes you are you Allah you are our Rabb you are our caretaker you are our creator you are our owner you are our master okay so just like that before you were brought on earth when all the souls alas to bi Rabbi kum قالوا بلا just like that today you have been created you خلقناكم أو like we created you the first time you're now in front of me now just like that بل زعمتم أن لن نجعل لكم موعدا but you claimed you thought right that we would not make that we would not make for you an appointment meaning that you would not have to face us one day you, this is what how we live our lives as if we're never going to face Allah may Allah increase our iman then what happens وَوُضِي الْكِتَابِ and the book will be placed فَتَرَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ and you would see the mujrimin the criminals mushfiqin in fear mimma fi of what's in it right now it, 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 think about 100 years 200 years ago when they didn't have computers and it would be so hard to believe that you know everything can be on record everything i do my entire life is going to be on record but now it's so easy to believe in this right it's not even like a second thought wa wudi al kitab fa tara al mujrimin mushfiqin mimma fi wa yaquluna ya waylana oh darn you know kind of like uh, ya waylana, what a destruction for me. Mani hadha al-kitab, what is this book? La yugadiru saghiratan wa la kabiratan illa ahsaha. That there is nothing small or big, right? Except nothing is missing from it. Nothing is left from it. Illa ahsaha, except it completely encompasses it. Wa wajidu ma amilu hadira. And whatever they had din, done, done, they will find right there. They will see right what they did. وَلَا يُذْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even he, though he has your record, but he doesn't wrong anyone any, with any injustice. No one will be done any injustice on that day. Now, just like Sutul Bani Israel, over here again, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمِ The story of Adam and Iblis is being mentioned. Okay? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ, وإذ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ you know what's in interesting here I want to mention very quickly is that this comes right in the middle of Sutul Kahf, you can say. Sutul Kahf has 110 ay ayat, Sutul Bani Israel has 111. Just in the middle of Sutul Bani Israel is this event, and just in the middle of Sutul Kahf is this event. Same and with almost very similar wordings in the first part. And remember when we said to the angels, it's Juduli Adam, bow down to Adam. فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ They all bowed down except Iblis. كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ He was amongst the jinn. You know, this is a big misunderstanding uh, that, uh, you know, Iblis was the fallen angel and so on and so forth. This is like completely not Quranic. إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ He was amongst the jinns. فَفَسَقَ أَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ So he disobeyed the command of Allah. Meaning angels cannot disobey the command of Allah. Then Allah says, O oh, children of Adam, Adam Do you take him, meaning Iblis, and his children, his tribe, his supporters, awliya, as your friend and protectors? Right? You're not, you, instead of choosing Allah, you've chosen the shayateen. Because what is the end result of being seduced into dunya, you want more and more dunya, more and more dunya, and then you're jealous of those people who have dunya, and jealousy then leads to, oh, well, what are, what are some great ways, some magical ways I can get this? And then you get into magic. This is how it goes. This is why these rich and famous Rothschilds and stuff, that's why they're into magic. Because this is the result of dunya. That you took them as protectors, as helpers, other than me? But in fact, they're your real enemies. And what a bad substitution, right? For the wrongdoers, this is, you know, what a bad choice that they have made, these wrongdoers have made. Now these shayateen, they have a narrative too, about the world and all of that. I'm not going to go into that, but they have a story of their perspective of everything that happened. So Allah says about them, مَا أَشْهَدْتُهُمْ خَلْقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Those shayateen, they never witnessed the creation of the heavens and the earth. وَلَا خَلْقَ أَنفُسِهِمْ Nor did they witness the creation of themselves. وَمَا كُنْتُمْ مُتَّخِذِينَ 
mudilina aduda. Nor do I take such misneaders as as, as any type of as, as assistance or helpers from because they were pretending to be like you know ass, assistant sometimes they pretend to be assistances or like angels in the world of god sometimes they pretend to be against angels i'm not going to go into the details of that right now but you know allah says why are you listening to these shayateen they 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 weren't even there they don't even know anything you choose them over allah and it will be said on the day of judgment those people that fell into this deception. Yawma yaqulu nadu shuraka'i alladhi zamtum. Those, those partners of mine that used to claim, right, and used to buy into their stories and everything that they fed you, right, okay, call them then. Fadauhum. So they will call them. Falam, falan, falam yastajibu. They won't answer. Lahum. They won't answer them. Waja'alna baynahum mawbiqa. And then at that time, a barrier will be put between them and those that they're calling. Okay. وراء وراء المجرمون النار فظنوا أنهم مو مواقعها. And the criminals they'll see the fire and they will know at that time. ظنوا here doesn't only mean that they will think, but they will be absolutely certain at that time. They will know for sure at that أنهم مواقعها that they're going to now be put into it. وَلَمْ تَجِدُوا أَنْهَا مَصْرِفَةً and they will at that time know that there's no there's no changing this. Okay, there's no turning this over. There's no, nothing that can be done about this. Again, this is a similar ayah to Surah Al-Bani Israel. وَلَكَدْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلنَّاسِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثَلٍ And indeed, we have given diverse, many diverse uh, instructions and examples and ways of bringing them to guidance. Right? وَلَكَدْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لِلنَّاسِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثَلٍ of all types of instructions, all types of examples have been given. وَكَانَ الْإِنْسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدَلَ But the truth is man is arguing, the arguing type when it comes to most things. Okay? This ayah also is similar to, very very similar in wordings to Bani Israel. وَمَا مَنَعَ النَّاسِ أَنْ يُؤْمِنُوا إِذْ جَاءَتْهُمُ الْهُدَى وَمَا مَنَعَ النَّاسِ Over there is مَا مَنَعَ النَّاسِ Regarding the Prophet ﷺ What has stopped them from believing of the Prophet Except that they say أَبَشَرُ يَحْدُونَ A man like us is going to guide us Over here it's referring to the Qur'an وَمَا مَنَعَ النَّاسِ أَنْ يُؤْمِنُوا إِذْ جَاءَهُمُ الْهُدَى When guidance has come to them What stops them from believing when guidance has come to وَيَسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّهُمْ And that they should seek forgiveness from Allah إِلَّا أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ سُنَّةُ الْأَوَّلِينَ Except the result will be the same will happen to them What happened to the people before The sunnah of the punishments of Allah أَوْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ أَزَابُ قُبُولًا Or they will they, they, That some punishment should come Right before them Right in front of them Okay This is what happened before And this is what happened This I mean this is what happened before and this is what will happen uh, when you are behaving this way. This ayah also, the next ayah, وَمَا نُرْسِلُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْزِرِينَ is very similar to the ayah of the Bani Israel, except there it is uh, in singular, over here it is in plural. بَشِيرًا uh, وَنَذِيرًا uh, comes there. وَمَا نُرْسِلُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ We don't send any messenger, إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْزِرِينَ Except he gives tabshir, give good news. O Munzirin, or he warns you, وَيُجَادُ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِالْبَاطِلِ And over there it says, جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَذَهَبِ الْبَاطِلِ Over here it says, وَيُجَادُ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِالْبَاطِلِ And those people who argue, right, for the falsehood, with fa meaning the people who do kufr, they argue for the falsehood. لِيُذْهِذُوا بِهِ الْحَقُّ So they want to, what? They want to invalidate the truth. وَاتَّخَذُوا آيَاتِ وَمَا أُنزِلُ هُزُوَا And they take my signs and my warning that that will happen like as a joke, right? They think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not act against their injustices. No, Allah will act. Allah is going to act against their injustices. وَمَنْ أَذْلَمُ مِمَّنْ ذُكِرَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّي And who can be more wrong and unjust than the one who's reminded of the signs of Allah? فَعَرَضَ أَنْهَا and then he turns away from it. From it. وَنَسِيَ مَا قَدَّمَتْ يَدَى And it goes, not only forgets, uh, he turns away from the ayat of Allah, the result is, وَنَسِيَ مَا قَدَّمَتْ يَدَى He even forgets the, the wrong things that he did. إِنَّ جَعَلْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ أَكِنَّةً And we've put over their hearts a, a, a seal, you can say. أَنْ يَفْقَهُوهُ 
a covering so that they can't understand. And there is deafness in their ears. They don't hear. And if you guide them to guidance, then they're at a point of no return. You know, uh, there, there's no point, there's point of no return for them. They have reached a point of no return, okay? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَبُّكَ الْغَفُورُ ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ And your Rabb is giving them signs out of His mercy, His غفور الرحمة. He's the one who forgives. Allah wants to forgive you. He's giving you chances to, to, to be forgiven. لَوْ يُؤَاخِذُهُمْ بِمَا كَسَبُوا If Allah was to take uh, the, give them the reward of what they're doing immediately, لَجَعَلْ لَهُمُ الْعَذَابِ if that's what, then Allah would make the punishment come very fast. But no, there is a time that's appointed. You have up till this time. And then after that, you'll find no escape. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further makes this point in the next ayah, where Allah says, There were then these cities. We destroyed these cities. When they did wrong also, the cities before. But we didn't. Punish them immediately as soon as they did wrong. No. And we made for their destruction Mo'ida, also a time appointed, a, a promise, an appointed promised time that they had until. Now from here is the story of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam in Khidr. Even though the Jews will finish in the uh, beginning part of this, but uh, it's a very interesting story, right? So um, let's start with. So there was an event, uh, you know, where Musa, uh, this is perhaps most likely happening in the beginning of his Nubuah. Just like the Prophet ﷺ was appointed an angel in the beginning of his Nubuah, it's possible that something similar happened with Musa ﷺ in the beginning of his Nubuah, in his beginning of his prophethood. And, you know, he had Yusha bin Nun as his uh, assistant, uh, okay, he, and, and so, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِفَتَاهُ Now, Musa ﷺ had said, Maybe perhaps that I'm the most knowledgeable person according to the tradition. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to teach him and in order to do his tarbiyah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, no, if you go to such and such place, you will find a servant of mine who we've given also special knowledge. So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, was being trained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though in terms of actual sharia, a prophet will always have a higher rank than anybody else, but in the beginning, in order to do tarbiyah, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did. Okay? But the specialty here, again, is not of the Prophet, but in this instance, uh, in this specific instance, it is the specialty of the non-Prophet. وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِفَتَاهُ And when Musa alayhi salatu wa salam said to his, uh, you know, his his, his uh, servant, لَا أَبْرَحَ حَتَّى أَبْلَغَ مَجْمَا الْبَحْرَيْنِ We will not stop. Right? Until we reach the point where the two seas meet, or the two Bahar rivers meet, or the two uh, oceans meet, or the two any bodies of water meet. Or then I'm just going to keep walking till I find this person. Right? Now, there's a different opinion where this is. One opinion is that uh, this is, uh, you can see this is Egypt, right? And this is where uh the two uh you could say the two o the two oceans meet in around this place over here okay just on, in the red river red sea okay the other opinion is that this is referring to the nile because he was in egypt and where the two niles meet okay it's referring to that allahu a'lam okay so um then he said with qala musa li fatahu la abrahu hatta ablagha majma' al-bahrain i'm not going to stop I will not cease traveling. I'm not going to rest, basically. Uh, but even though he does rest, so I won't stop. It's probably a better translation. Majma al Bahrain until I reach the place where the two oceans meet. Aw umdiya hukuba. By the way, if we want to be critical in terms of tafsir, the name Khidr is not mentioned. Okay, uh, nor is it mentioned if he's human or not human, or if he's an angel or not an angel. Allahu a'lam. Allah knows best. Okay, but over here, this human. Or this angel is going to teach uh, Prophet Musa a uh, a few lessons. And when they reach that destination where the 
place where they were supposed to meet. Nasiyahutahuma. So he forgot the fish. Okay. So when he reached that junction, he he forgot about the fish. That was the sign that there would the fish would become alive. They, because in Egypt at that time they had a delicacy. I read this uh, at another place. They had a, they, one of the delicacies that is the fish. It was a common food for them. And so this fish, and it's just not even a fish. It's not like samak. It's hut, right? So it's a big fish. So it slipped away into the into the into the into the bahr into the uh into the, uh, into the river. Okay, it slipped away into the sea. <coughs> so the sign was the fish slipping away. That had already happened. They kept going. So when they kept going and you know they went beyond their point. Bring us our food. We become tired walking here. And <coughs> and up to the point that they Allah had told Musa والسلام, to go, the actual point, he was not tired. And so there's a spiritual aspect to this too. That uh, But when they went beyond that, he started getting tired. Okay? We become tired from this trip. And then he remembered, oh, you know what? That that fish that you're asking for was the sign, the sign, that sign of that fish, because maybe there was other things besides the fish. There were other things besides the fish. So the fish was one of them, and that's the one that went into the river. He saw that but forgot to mention it. So he, in an explanation, Yusha bin Nun says, Qala arayta id awayna ila sahrati. Do you remember when we took uh, some, you know, we some took some shelter uh, near that rock? Some there must have been some rock there. I forgot about the fish. And I didn't forget except because of shaitan. An azkura that I should that I would have mentioned it to you, you know, and uh, and what the khada sabilahu fil bahri ajaba and what the khada sabilahu fil bahri. And it, what an amazing thing this I saw that it just went into the sea. Okay? So he's giving this explanation to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. ma kunna This is what we wanted, Musa said. So they traced their steps back to that place where that rock was. So we found a servant amongst our servants. Now, who he could, he could be an angel, he could even be, according to Shaulillah Muhaddas Dilbi Rahmatullah, sometimes the arwah, the ruh of righteous people is used for the commandments of Allah sometimes. This is his opinion. So it could be uh, that he was a special human being or he was, uh, you know, uh, one of these categories. Allahu anum. Fawajada abdam min ibadina. And then we, we found a, a special servant of ours, you can say. Atainahu rahmatam min indina. And we gave him mercy from our special self. And we gave him special knowledge from our self. Meaning, uh, this uh, this idea of ilmul ladun. Uh, ladun meaning specially from Allah. It doesn't come through experimenting or testing. It doesn't come from the, the, the word of Allah, the scriptures, or from the hadith. But something Allah taught someone directly. Okay, knowledge of that sort also exists. Uh, which this modern world, uh, you know, basically is in denial of such a, such a thing. قَالَ لَهُ مُوسَى هَلْ أَتَّبِعُكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُعَلِّمَ مِمَّا عُلِّمْتَ رُشْتَ Musa alayhi salatu wasalam said, هَلْ أَتَّبِعُكَ Is it okay if I follow you? عَلَىٰ عَلَىٰ أَن تُعَلِّمَنِي That you teach me مَا مِمَّا عُلِّمْتَ رُشْتَ Of the things that you've been taught, of the good things you've been taught, uh, you know, of, of sound judgment, إِنَّكَ لَن تَسْتَطِيعَ مَعِيَ الصَّبْرَ He said, you don't, you cannot have sabr with me. وَكَيْفَ تَصْبِرُ How can you have sabr? عَلَى مَا, ما لَمْ تُحِتْ بِهِ خُبُرَ For the things that you have no information about. You don't know really what's going on. You're going to look at the world in terms of cause and effect and and, and then it'll be very hard to have sabr. قَالَ سَتَجِدُونِ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ الصَّابِرَ Now, he said, Satajiduni for 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 having uh, he said he, over here he says inshallah qala satajiduni inshallah sabira wala a'si laka amra 
and I will not disobey your command. His command was then, don't obey me. I will have sabr, he said, inshallah, for that. For I will not disobey you, he didn't say, inshallah, for that. And so some scholars have commented on that point. Qala fa'anittaba'ni fala tas'alni an shay'in. If you follow me, don't ask me about anything. Hatta uhditha laka minhu dhikra. Until I myself tell you something about it, don't, don't say anything. Fantalaqa. Now he should have said, some Mufassirin said, he should have said, yes, inshallah, I will not ask you. And this was where, you know, don't say anything except you say inshallah about doing something. That we just read that. So, فَانْتَلَقَ حَتَّى إِذَا رَكِبَ فِي السَّفِينَةِ So they went until they came onto a ship. خَرَقَهَا So he, what did he do? He, uh, he tore the ship, opened it. قَالَ خَرَقْتَهَا You put a hole in the ship. لِتُغْرِكَ أَحْلَهَا So that, the, you know, this is Musa we're dealing with. Then you see, the people will drown. لَقَدْ جِئْتَ شَيْءً إِمْرَى This is a very big thing you have done. You know, what have you done? And then he reminds him, Did I not tell you don't have sabr with me? Don't take me for tasks for what I forgot. And do not cover me in, uh, and do not put over me, make this a difficult situation for me. Let me follow you, please. Let me keep learning. فانطلقا. So then they left. حتى لقينا غلاما فقتله. Until they met a little boy and then he killed him. قال أقتلت نفسا زكية. You've killed a pure young boy, a soul بغير نفس with no just cause. لقد لقد جئت شيئا نكرا. Indeed, you have come with something very deplorable, very hateful. What you have done. Why have you done this? Right. So. Uh, so alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, we finished the 15th juz. Now, I don't know why, you know, these ajza, these juz are not in the sunnah of the Prophet and these have really, uh, they came afterwards. And so now, you know, just in the middle of this uh, event between Musa and Khidr, this just breaks. Uh, and so inshallah, we'll continue the 16th juz. Um, uh, inshallah, starting on Tuesday, if Allah wills. So he killed this young boy. He says, you've done a very horrible thing. One point before we end. There's, what is happening here? The, whether, people only see the Sharia, but they don't see the spirit. Or people see the appearances, but they don't see reality. So this is about seeing reality, 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 not just the appearances. You have to know the repeal, uh, the appearances. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, remember when we, Allah was saying if there are three or if there are five or there are seven. And Allah says, stick to what is apparent thereof. Stick to what is zahir thereof, right? And don't go into details of the things that are unnecessary. So the same thing here, you have to stick to the apparent. But be, in addition to sticking to the apparent, you have to penetrate and see really what is going on sometimes. Okay? And so that has to do based upon priority. Okay.